Hey everyone, what's happening? So today what we're going to talk about is the Gulf War illness and what was the cause of that illness. And as you can tell from the thumbnail, we're going to talk about sarin gas. So let's get into it. So there's been numerous articles that just came out that state that Gulf War illness was caused by sarin gas exposure. Um, that's what researchers say. And it makes total sense. Um, I remember while we were, we were there, and I'm sure many other of my Marine friends remember as well, uh, and brother in arms, that we actually had um, our NBC alerts go off, uh, stating that there was some kind of exposure. And of course, we were told that this was a false alarm, which it wasn't, as we know now. Um, and that is when we were exposed to sarin gas. And how did this happen? It, it wasn't caused by the Iraqis um, actually trying to expose us or detonating sarin gas or anything like that. What happened was with all the bombs that we were dropping and all the munition dumps that we were um, causing the explosions in, we ended up releasing it ourselves. Um, and that is a theory, uh, but it's something I firmly believe. And I think one of the reasons why they didn't want us or they told us that this was a false alarm was two, two reasons. Uh, one is to not cause panic. Number two is we knew that if the Iraqis had turned around and actually used chemical, biological and chemical weapons on us, that we were going to switch to tactical nukes and do some serious damage. And I don't think they wanted to do that, uh, do the, the tactical nukes to begin with. But that's just Craig talking and what he thinks um, was the reason behind why we were told that this was just a false positive and it wasn't real. So at this point, let's get into a couple of articles about it. So I want to start off with um, an article that came out in disabledveterans.com. And what the article says, and this came out May 19th of this year, Gulf War illness caused by sarin gas exposure. And that's what researchers say. Veterans suffering from Gulf War syndrome were exposed to sarin gas, according to research findings that prove the connection. So let's talk about a little bit more. Variance in genetics between veterans resulted in difference of effort from the exposure not malingering, personality disorder, or some other psychosis. I think what bothers me is uh, for years they said that the Gulf War was just was bullshit. Uh, the Gulf War illness was bullshit. They said it was all um, psychosis within your brain. Um, and, and it was just, you know, psychological. And that's where it was coming from. So let me continue on. Ex exposure to sarin gas was responsible for sickening roughly 250,000 U.S. troops who served in the 1990-1991 Persian Gulf War. After 30 years of federal agencies treating Gulf War veterans as crazy for their mysterious conditions, repeated the same sins as those same federal agencies after Vietnam and shame on them. And you think about it, we were treated that this is all psychological, that there was actually nothing that happened. But now they know that there was exposure. And some of this exposure explains some of the symptoms that I've been having personally, and I'm sure many of my other brothers in arms have been dealing with as well. So, First, let's talk about what caused the exposure. And I said that at the beginning, which is what I've always said. Uh, when you talk to my family, you know for years I've said that's what happened and we were exposed. You know, I've said it for years. 
U.S. destroyed a bunker housing chemical weapons in the Kashmir Ammunition Storage Depot, and I may not have pronounced that correctly, located in southern Iraq. The explosion created a plume of toxins that spread across a 25-mile radius. Thousands of coalition troops were likely exposed to sarin and cyclosarin. So two different types, actually. So who may be linked to the exposure? Well, Newsweek published a story in 2015 linking the former VA chief of staff, John Gingrich, to a nerve gas demolition impacting thousands of troops for decades. Now, I don't want to get into this section here um, where they knew about it. And I am going to leave links to these articles so you can read them in depth and really see what they're all about. But uh, what I want to talk about is a little bit below, um, which is some of the issues that people have dealt with. So following the Gulf War, nearly one third of all the deployed um, personnel reported unexplained chronic symptoms, such as rashes, which I've dealt with still for years, fatigue, definitely, gastrointestinal problems and digestive issues, brain fog. That's probably one of the biggest things that I deal with uh, sometimes it's like you're in a fog and you're not quite in reality and you feel like almost like in a dream when you're not in a dream, when you're awake and doing things. And this comes across to me all the time. I deal with this. Um, and I'm sure many others uh, here have. Neuropathy and muscular and joint pain. I've been taken now for years uh, pain medications to deal with these joint pains and muscle pains. And notice that federal agencies spent years broadly dismissing the idea that troops have, may have been suffering from exposure to chemical agents, with many veterans experiencing symptoms sent to mental health providers, which is what happened to me um, and many of my other friends and brothers in arms. Um, so. You know, this this is what we're talking about here is the sarin gas definitely caused some serious medical issues for people. And they've been dealing with them for years and they've been dismissed. So I think the good news is, is it's coming to light. You know, it, it's finally coming to light and it's starting to take notice. So there's another article which I won't read the whole thing because I know you can read, but this is on military.com. So this is another article where researchers think they found the cause of the Gulf War illness. And again, they're talking about the sarin gas. So it's another article that gets into the symptoms, the digestive issues, uh, gastrointestinal issues, and it's interesting about digestive issues and so forth. Myself, I've had two major throat surgeries, a Nissan procedure, and I had to go back in for multiple procedures to expand my throat. I've had digestive tract issues um, for years now and, and all those things, but enough about me. Um, but this article goes on to say the same thing that they agree that this is something that is related to, um, you know, chemical weapons is basically what is, you know, chemical agents. Um, so, you know, speaking of that, let, let's, let's move on a little bit farther. Now, what should you do? Here's what you should do. You need to get it in your record. It needs to be in your record. You need to just bring it up, bring up what happened to you, anything you remember. I know the guys in my unit remember when we had the chemical alerts, the NBC alerts, and the lieutenant that came around saying that it was a false alarm, false alarm. I know they all remember that. Um, well, 
you need to contact your veteran service officer, your VSO. Um, I included the number that you can find who your VS closest VSO is. I also included a link um, to an organization called um, Lifeline for Vets who have information on your veteran service officers. And you can follow the organizations. They have details down here and where to go within your particular state. So there's a lot of details. And again, I will have that uh, located in the comments below. Um, so you can get any of these links here to get information and especially to get your VSO. The other thing with your VSO um, that you can do, one of the things that I did is I went and did a veteran service services office, Westmoreland County PA search. So if you do a veterans services office and put your county in there, make sure you put your state at the end, you can do a search and you should find here on the right, your organization that's within that county that you can contact and set up an appointment to go in and talk to them about this event. And for you Marines out there, if you were part of the Camp Lejeune water poisoning, which I did a different video, which will be um, when this is over, there will be a link to that video uh, in the in the uh, outro. Um, you can also get more information on that, but that'll also help you find your VSO so you can turn around and add that in as well. So um, I hope this gave you some insight into what's going on um, with the sarin gas and the issues that we've had to deal with. Um, so with that, what I'd like to do is leave you with some final thoughts. And my thought is it's actually being taken care of now. It's finally being looked at. Something's starting to be done about it. So it's really important that we think about some of the things from the past and learn from it. So is this Agent Orange all over again, where they didn't do anything for the Vietnam veterans? Um, yeah. It's been 30 years. So, you know, it's been that long ago since it happened. It's 30 years and it's just starting to come to light. So yeah, it's very similar to what our veterans of the Vietnam uh, war, not conflict, war went through. That's in my eyes. Um, and what you need to do is take action now. You need to contact your VSO. Do not mess around. Get your name in there. Make sure you're a part of it. Uh, tell them what your symptoms are. Think about those things that you've been dealing with. And don't necessarily think, oh, they're just old age because I've had joint pain for the past 20 years or I've had knee pain for the past 20 years. Those are all symptoms. Oh, I keep getting these rashes over and over again. Those are symptoms. I, I constantly have brain fog, you know, those are symptoms. So take care of those things. So again, hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope I gave you some education and insight into what's going on with the sarin gas. Please, if you would, do me a favor. Please like this video if you found it educational and some help in dealing with this issue. And also, if you'd subscribe, if you want to see more items about Veterans Affairs, medical service dogs, medical disability, um, anything to that nature, I'll continue to add on uh, new information weekly and uh, take care.